Nux Content is a module that provides a file-based data layer to your Nux app. It's built by the Nux core team and parses Markdown, YAML, CSV, and JSON files and gives you nice ways to query this content and also display it in your app. I use it for a lot of the tutorial content on LearnView. And in this video, we're gonna check out how to get started in Nux Content. We can either create a brand new project with Nux Content or we can add it to an existing project like this. After it's installed, we have to add this module to the config file. And a lot of the things that I'm gonna be showing are using the edge release, so I'm gonna change that version in the package.json. Then to start creating content, let's go to our root folder, make a directory called content, and then let's say we want to make blog posts. We can create a folder called blog and then throw in a couple markdown files. And the cool thing about Nux content is it automatically adds Shiki for syntax highlighting in your markdown files. Then we want to create a Nux page that renders these blog posts. Since Nux uses file-based routing, we can go to our pages directory, add a folder called blog, and then make a dynamic route that will read in the URL after slash blog as our slug. So for example, if we went to this URL, our slug would equal Matt's hot takes. Now we're ready to render our content. Let's use main as our wrapper element, and then all we have to do is add the content.component that comes with Nux content. By default, the search is our content folder for a file matching the current path. For example, this is our current path, so Nux content will grab the file from content slash blog slash Matt's hot takes, and then render the parsed markdown. If we inspect element, we can see another cool thing that Nux content does. It automatically sets the meta title and description for this page. It defaults to using the first h1 and first paragraph of each page, but we can also use our files front matter and specify fields called title and description to override this. We can also add custom properties that will be available when we query our content. You may notice that I don't have any styles on this content and that's because Tailwind's resetting all of them. But one thing to know is that plain scope styles won't work on our content since it's rendering inside of a child component. And we have two ways around this. We can either remove scope and use global CSS, or if we still want to use scope style, we can use the deep selector, which allows us to style child components. If you want even more customization on how this page renders, we can actually query this content inside of our script section and then render it on our own. So first, let's get access to our route, and then we want to use use async data to dedupe this data fetch across requests. And inside, we want to return query content where our path equals our route.path, and then we only want to return one. There's a bunch of different options that we can add here. For example, we can specify which keys we want to return from our content, but I'm going to leave a link to the documentation down below and you can check out all the options. And now we have full access to this content. For example, we can create a header section where we print out the title and the author. And then to actually render our content, instead of using content doc, we want to use content renderer and bind a prop called value to our data. If we go ahead and refresh, we'll see our new section as well as our content still being rendered. One thing to know is that if we do it this way, we won't automatically get those meta tags. So I recommend checking out Nux built-in use head composable to handle all your meta tags, or you can get this done using some of the meta components as well. As you can see, query content gives you tons of control over your content. For example, if we made a blog slash index page, we can actually use query content to get all of the files inside of our content slash blog folder. And then we can render out a list of all of them that links to each individual post. But now let's get to my favorite feature of Nux content, and that's the MDC syntax, which is short for Markdown Components. It's a special Markdown syntax that allows your plain Markdown files to interact with your view components. Let's say we wanted to create a callout section that renders an icon and then display some text. We can make this component inside of the component slash content folder, which is a special folder for the Nux content module. We want this component to accept a prop called icon, and then to handle the slot, we can use the content module's content slot component, which acts as a special slot that accepts rich text rendered by Markdown. We're going to bind this to the default slot, but we can also make it use content from the name slot just by changing the use property. To use this component inside of our Markdown file, we want to use two colons as the identifier, pass in the name of our component, and then throw in some rich text between the two identifiers. To pass our icon prop, we can either use an object syntax that accepts key value pairs, or use a YAML syntax like this. Another cool thing about the MDC syntax is that we can also add classes onto text or images by adding the attributes inside of curly braces. I think that this works great with Tailwind because we can add individual styles to our content directly from the markdown. But if we go ahead and look at our page now, we can see our custom component rendering. So as you can see, Nux content is ridiculously powerful. And in this video, we only really cover the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole nother feature called document driven mode that really gives a lot more power to markdown based websites. And if this video gets say, 500 likes. I'll make a video on document driven mode. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you give Nux content a try. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.